My name is Kishmani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishmani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. This is our third video in the series. In the first video, we did problems 1 through 8. In the second video, we did problem number 9 through 15, I believe. 9 through 15. And today we'll pick up from problem number 16. Let's get going. Problem number 16. If you like, you could actually, at the end of each problem, after I finish setting it up, pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. You will get more out of it that way. Let's get going. Number 16. Number 16. If the difference between two numbers, if the difference between two numbers is 7, and if, and if the smaller number, and if the smaller number is A, what is the greater one? I'm going to read it to you one more time. If the difference between, this, this symbol is for between, between two numbers is 7, and if the smaller number is A, what is the greater one? The simplest, easiest, quickest, the most efficient method is to simply plug in numbers here, do the problem arithmetically, and whatever principle, whatever logic that you use, whatever rationale that is applied in an arithmetic problem is the same exact logic, same exact rationale will apply in the algebra problem because algebra and arithmetic are one and the same. It's just that in algebra, instead of numbers, we have unknown quantities. So, if the difference between the two numbers is 7 and if the smaller number is A, make up a number, whatever you like. If, let's, let's plug in 10 here. So if the smaller number is 10, what's the greater one if the difference is 7? Well, if the difference is 7 and the smaller one is 10, the greater one must be 17. It must be 17. The question is, where did the 17 come from? This 17 came from 7 plus 10. That's your answer. 7 plus 10, but of course we're not going to write 10, we're going to write our symbol here, which is A. 7 plus A is the answer. 7 plus A is the answer, but that's been not quite done yet. In algebra, it's always a good idea to adhere to the convention, to the traditions. The traditions, the, con the tradition, the convention dictates that we write the variable first. A plus 7 is the answer. Although if you left it as 7 plus A, it's not wrong. It just looks very awkward. It looks very ugly. A plus 7 is the answer. Let's do the next one. Number 17. If the sum of two numbers is S, if the sum of two numbers is S, and one of them is T, What is the other one? If one of them is T, what is the other one? Again, we're going to do the same thing what we did there. Let's erase all of this thing here so that it doesn't confuse us. So the answer to this problem was answer to this problem was 17, which is A plus 7. That's the answer to that problem. If the sum, if the sum of two numbers is two, S. Make up a number, anything that you like, anything at all like. I'm going to make up 20. So draw a little line there and put a 20 here. No need to waste your time writing here s equals to 20, just put right there, put it down 20. If the sum of the two numbers is 20, now it reads, and if one of the, one of the number, and if the one of the number is, is t, what's the other? Make up a number for t, anything that you like at all, anything at all. Let's just plug in 7. So if the sum is 20 and one of them is 7, was the other one? Answer, of course, is 13. If, one of, if their sum is 20 and one of them happens to be 7, the other one would have to be 13. The question is, where did 13 come from? 13 came from, 13 came from 20 minus 7. But 20 is represented by letter S. So the answer is S minus T. 
The answer to this problem is S minus T. Question was, the question was, was the other number? The answer is, other number is S minus T. Let's do one more. Number 18. Seventy-five. Seventy-five is how much more than Q? Seventy-five is how much more than Q? Again, as always, we're going to plug in number here. Let's just make up something here. Let's put in twenty here. So now, can you tell me seventy-five is how much more than twenty? Well, seventy-five is fifty-five more than twenty. Question is. Where did you arrive at 55? How did you arrive at 55? Well, 55 is simply, the 55 simply is 75 minus 20. But there is your answer. All you have to do is now replace it the variable. 75 remains 75 because it was given in the problem, minus 20, which we plugged in for Q. So the answer to this problem is 75 minus Q. If 75, the question was 75 is how much more than Q? The answer is 75 is... 75 minus Q more than Q. Let's do the next one, shall we? This is how you build your skill by doing simple things like this. One sentence problems and once you have mastered the technique, once you understand the concept as to how to translate variables into expressions and equations, then and only then we are ready to solve more complex problems. Do you understand? So about the first 50 that we're going to do in the series are going to be very simple, very straightforward, very easy. Let's do number 19. By how much, by how much does P exceed 50? By how much does P exceed 50? Again, put in something here. How about 52? By how much does 52 exceed 50? Of course, it makes sense to plug in something more than 50 because they're asking us, by how much does it exceed? If you plug in something less than 50, you're going to end up with negative quantity. You don't, you don't want to deal with that. By how much does 52 exceed 50? Well, 52 exceeds 50 by 2. Well, how did you, how did you get that? The answer, of course, is 252 minus 50. Well, 52 is your P right there. So the answer is answer to this problem is P minus 50. By how much does P exceed 50? The answer is P exceeds 50 by P minus 50. Let's do the next one. Number 20. Number 20. If 35 contains if 35 contains P 5 times if 35 contains P 5 times what's the value of P? Again another Pretty straightforward, simple question. If 35 contains, which is same, if 35 contains, that means is equals to 5 times, if 35 contains P, 5 times. So 5 times P, 5 times P, you see, 35 contains P, 5 times, which means 5 times P must equal 35. The question is, what's the value of P? Very simple. Divide both sides of the equation by 5 and we're done. 5 will cancel out and P equals 7. Of course, P will equal 7 because the question, the question tells us that 35 contains P 5 times. We just found out P is 7. And 35, 35 contains P, which happens to be 7. 35 contains P 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 sevens are 35. 5 sevens are 35. That's how we read it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many sevens do you see here? I see 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 5 sevens are 35. That's what it says here. 
if 35 contains P, 5 times what's the value of P? P must be 7. Let's do one more. Next one. Number 21. Number 21. What value of U? What value of U will make 3U equal to 57? Again, the same, same sort of problem as the one we just finished. So what value of, what value of U, what value of U so we have some unknown quantity for u, we'll make 3u equal to 57. So 3u, 3u has to equal to 57. The question is, in order for this to be true, in order for this statement to hold, what would u have to be? What, what value will u assume in, or in order for 7 times that value to be equal to 57? Let's find out. Divide both sides by 3. And there you have it. 3 is going to cancel out and u equals to 57 divided by 3, whatever that happens to be. Is 57 first of all divisible by 3? Is 57 divisible by 3? We learned it in our series of basic math. Where is it? Right here in the series of basic math. In the first 100 videos, 1 through 100. If you don't have to watch all the way up to 200. If you just want to improve your skill on basic math, Watch 1 through 100. In those videos, we learn the rules for divisibility. And we learn that we can find out whether or not a number is divisible by 3 by looking at the sum of its digits. If the sum of the digits, S U M sum of the digits, is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. Here we have 57, which is 5 plus 7. The sum of the digits here is 12. Since 12 is divisible by 3, 57 must be divisible by 3. So let's divide it, shall we? How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has only one 3. 5 has only one 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 27. How many 3's does 27 have? 27 has 9 3's. There you go. We're done. So the u equals 19. Of course it equals 19 because the number that we were dealing with was 57. And 57 is just 3 less than 60. If we had one more 3, it would have been 60. And 60, of course, is made up of 60, of course, is made up of 30 plus 30. 30 plus 30, and we know that 30 is made up of 10 threes, and this 30 is made of 10 threes. So 60 is equal to 20 threes. 20 threes are 60. We don't have 60. We have 57. We have one fewer threes. So instead of 20, 23's, it should be 19 threes. We didn't have to do all of this thing. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. But before I erase the blackboard, before I erase the blackboard, one thing that I want, uh, one thing that I do want you to make a note of, it may come in handy sometime, is to understand and realize that 57, 57, a lot of the time when people are asked to make the list of prime numbers, for some strange and inexplicable reason, they end up putting 57 as a prime number, as we just saw. 57 is indeed divisible, divisible by 3. 57 equals 3 times 19. 57, we found out, is not a prime number. It is not a prime number. Because it's divisible by 3, it's divisible by 19. Let's do the next one. Number 22. What value of W, what value of W will make 7W equal to 91? Same as before, what value of W will make, will make 7w equal to 91. 
all we have to do is divide both sides by 7 and we, we can find the value of w. Divide both sides of the equation by 7. We can get rid of this 7 from here and w will equal whatever 91 divided by 7 happens to be. How much is 91 divided by 7? If you were to walk up to me or if you were to wake, up in the, wake me up in the middle of my sleep and ask me what is 91 divided by 7, my answer would be how the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? How many 7 does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. That I don't know. 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2, listen carefully, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 and become 21. Just like the long division, except we are doing the long division in our head. It is exactly what we are doing, we are doing the long division. You see, 91 divided by 7. How many 7 does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 and become 21. And 21 has, has 3 7. There you go. So the answer is W is equal to 13. What value of W will make 7 times W equal to 91? The answer is 13 is the value. 13 times 7 equals 91. Again, before we go to the next problem, I also want you to make a note one more time. Are uh, the number that people sometimes confuse and think that it's a prime number, which in fact is not. We just found out that 91, 91 does not qualify as a prime number. We can clearly see 91 is the product of two prime numbers. 13 times 7 is 91. 91 happens to be a product of two prime numbers, 7 and 13. Let's do the last one, number 23. Number 23. If three apples, if three apples cost, three apples cost x dollars, should not be capital H if you're, if you're very picky. How much would two, the two dozen cost? Three apples cost X dollars. How much would two dozen cost? Well, there are a couple of ways we can approach it. There are a couple of ways we can approach it. Let's do it both ways. We know 3 cost x dollars. 3 cost x dollars. And if 3 cost x dollars, that implies that 1 must cost x over 3 dollars. Whatever this amount is, is a third of that amount. That's the price of 1. We don't want to buy 1, we want to buy 2 dozens. We, don't, we want to buy 2 dozens, which means that 24 should cost 24 times this amount, 3 x over 3 times 24. Let's get rid of this part here because it's getting annoying. That's it. x over x over 3 times 24. We have a 24 on the top, we have 3 on the bottom, divide top and bottom by 3 and we get 8 and the answer is 8 times x. 8 times x dollars. Two dozens. Two dozens will cost 8x dollars. That's one way of doing it. Another way we could have approached this problem is that is to understand that since 3 cost 3 cost x dollars and since and since and since 2 dozens is 24 which is simply 24 which is simply 8 times 3 24 this this symbol that we just did here let's put it here this this means this means since. Since as in logic, not as in time. Since, not since as in since 5 o'clock, not as in time, but in logic. Since. One more time, I'm going to read to you. 3 cos x dollars, that's what we're given here. If 3 cos x dollars, 3 cos x dollars, and since 2 dozen is 24, which is simply 8 times 3, and since the cos of the 3 is x dollars, Therefore, therefore, 24 should cost, should cost 8 times x dollars. 
this symbol that we see here, that means therefore. Two dots at the bottom, one dot on the top, two dots at the top, one dot at the bottom. So one more time, three cos x dollars and since 24 is, and three cos x dollars and since two dozen is 24, which is simply eight times three, therefore 24 should cause eight times the cost of three dollars, a cost of three apples. Eight times x, because the cost of three apples was x, eight x dollars. So this was more of an intuitive way, this is more of an algebraic way. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.